Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Broad Podcaster with me, Jennifer Fierro, here in the Highland Lakes, joined with Daniel Clifton, who covers Canyon Lake Hawk, Hawk football for us. We've already talked about the Barnett game and their big win over Davenport last week. In this segment, we're going to dive right into the Marble Falls Mustangs, who are going to do everything they possibly can to end the 2023 season with a victory. You know, Daniel, I, I thought about this, and I'm not sure when it dawned on me, but I realized something. Marble Falls, in every district game this year, they have faced a team that has lost the week before. Canyon Lake had lost their last non-district game. They came to Marble Falls and won. Burnett had lost to Lamp Passes in the season opener. Marble Falls goes to Burnett. Burnett wins. Marble Falls comes back, and they play Taylor. I think Taylor lost to Davenport the week before. Taylor beats Marble Falls in Marble Falls. Last week, Lamp Pass, Marble Falls goes and plays Lamp Passes. Lamp Passes is coming off a loss to Davenport. Lamp Passes wins. So, and of course, now this week, Marble Falls hosts Davenport, which is coming off a loss from yeah. Burnett. So, I, because I, every time it seems like some of these teams that are in, that are poised for an upset, Marble Falls is a week late. Or it happens too early. You know, and I, I asked Coach Herman about that when, when he and I talked during his media day on Tuesday. And, uh, and I forgot to mention this. For all stories in the Highland Lakes, please go to TexasChalkTalk.com. That's where you can read every story about Highland Lake sports uh, in this region. I, I wrote up my football preview today as I was going through that. And, and it's not just this year with the scheduling, you know, because Herman said I can look at the schedule throughout the season where I feel like we've had just some dumb luck that has gone against us. Yeah. And I, 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 I don't know what to tell him other than I thought it was a very interesting um, development if you will, in this 2023 season, every time Marble Falls has is ready to getting ready to play a district opponent, they they are playing somebody who has lost the week before. And as a player, I can tell you, nothing ever refocused me more than after a loss. Nothing ever fo- refocused yeah. me more than that. The, Marble Falls ends up losing to Lampasas last week. It wasn't close. Uh, 42 to 7. Uh, Lamp passes scored on every, I want to say, if it wasn't every drive in the first half, all five drives in the first half, then it was five of six. Um, yeah, it, they were, Lamp passes was pretty dominant. I think they had one punt, actually, had one punt in the first half. They scored on every drive. Uh, and they did it in a number of ways. They had I had them for 159 yards passing, um, 165 yards passing rather in the first half. Uh, had them for 105 rushing yards. They just found ways to score. Used different receivers. By the end of the game, they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different receivers. They had pulled their starters, the majority of their skill starters for sure. I don't know about their line, but Lampasas by halftime, they had, uh, by the start of the third quarter, rather, Lampasas had inserted their reserves at that point, especially on the skill players. Marble Falls did have a big highlight, and I was inc- incredibly happy for him. Jamie Castillo got his 1,000 yards. And, yeah, and, and what's him. great about is he was unavailable to play for the Brownwood game. So he got his thousand yards in eight games. Wow. Yeah, wow. I thought that was pretty incredible. And and I did not realize until I talked to Jamie how important that was to his teammates. That was important. It, you know, it was significant for him, but it meant so much to his teammates, especially to the linemen. And he mentioned that. That it was a, a, I don't want to say it was a personal goal for them, but 
it was certainly something that they had talked about. One, and, and it it really meant a lot to that line that he got his thousand yards. I can't emphasize that enough. That was a, a uh, he he really wanted me to know that when he and I spoke briefly after the ball game on Friday night. But um, just too many three and outs. You know, yeah. I don't feel like Marble Falls had that many turnovers. Um, they they had one lost fumble, but Lampasas just – Coach Herman told me he thought Lampasas may have been the most physical defense they've played this season. He thinks Davenport will be the fastest, you know, just looking at, at the Wolves on film. But it was just um, – Land passes after that loss to Davenport really came in very, very focused, wanting to play. It was hot, man. It was hot Friday night in land passes. It felt like a sauna. And then the rain came and everything kind of cooled off and, and the rain mother nature did hold off long enough for them to get that game played. So in that sense, I was very happy about that, but that's, those are really the main points here. I know that, um, Coach Herman and I talk a lot about finishing, finishing, finishing strong, finishing the drive, finishing the play, finishing the tackle, finishing the quarter, uh, because I think that there's not a sport that rewards finishing more than football does. And I asked him, what, what did you tell the players going into this last game of the season? And he said that he told them to finish it right, finish well. So I'm curious. Um, I'm very curious to see what Davenport and Marble Falls will present at Mustang Stadium on Friday at 7.30. Well, just talking about a little bit, I want to mention something so folks understand some things too. As far as like the, the district, this district is so is a tough district. And one way you can tell is if you look to the by district we'll face with, is um district 13 right over there, Bernie, Bernie top of the line there. But if you look at the down the line, they got Fredericksburg is three and one in that district. And everybody remember that Canyon Lake and Marble Falls have both beaten Fredericksburg. Right? Y'all beat Fredericksburg, right? Yeah, yes. Marble that that's Marble Falls' only win. I, I think I think I misheard you. Did you just tell me that Fredericksburg, Fredericksburg is three, is three and, and one in one? district? Three no and way. one in district. Daniel, I have to tell you, I thought Fredericksburg was the worst team I saw this year. And and that's what tells me about how tough and, and last and the Uvalde is also three and one in district. And they were like the fourth team last year. And Canyon Lake went and played them and beat them pretty good. So compared, I just think that one of the things you gotta remember is how tough district four our district is, district 13 is. And um, but nothing against Fredericksburg. It's just I just want to focus, you gotta realize that. Both Marble Falls and Canyon Lake have beat D Fredericksburg, and Fredericksburg sitting at three and one, and it's tied for second in District Fourteen. Are you sure everybody's reported their scores? Well, it has them in the lot standings right here. Bernie at four and zero, Uvalde three and one, Fredericksburg three and one, Somerset two and two, and then San Antonio Memorial and John F. Kennedy at zero or zero and four both. I, I must tell you, Daniel. I thought Fredericksburg was the worst team I saw. And no disrespect to the Billies, because I don't know. I don't know if yeah. they had key players who were injured and unavailable during the pre-district. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know, because one of my head coaches and I, he, he says that to me a lot, a lot. He says to me, I don't worry about what happens at other field houses because I don't know what they're going through in my field house. I know that we are dealing with failed tests. You can define tests any way you want. We are dealing with uh, health issues. We're dealing with illness. We're dealing with uh, players that have been deemed that have been suspended by, by me for conduct detr detrimental to the team. So he, you know, and, and his whole thing is these are things that we don't talk about. I don't tell yeah. you about these things. You don't write about these things. Um, but when I saw Fredericksburg, I didn't – I just didn't think much of that team. I'm shocked because you're right. Yeah, three and six, three th – three and six, they have all of their wins are in district play. They are, and yeah. three and one in that district, that is shocking. 
shocking to say the least. Wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> no wonder nobody in District 13 wants to play Bernie. No wonder. So, <laughs> crazy. Crazy. Wow. Okay. Anything else you, you want to mention or talk about here in this segment? Anything else before we close this out? And, and no, I think we're good. I'd like to just, the... I hope Marvel, I give Marvel Falls the best against Davenport. I hope they can. And I'm so glad that Jamie got that 1,000 yards. Yeah. And I think it shows a lot that he did it with in eight games, not right? Not eight nine. games. Eight it's games eight because games. he got that one. So, yeah. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I did not. I under not underestimated. I wasn't surprised he got the thousand yards. What shocked me is how much it meant to yeah. that to his teammates. That was the shocker. I was not expecting him to go on and on about how that was something that that he shared with with his teammates, particularly the offensive line and his blockers. And that that was a, a huge source of motivation for that team, that he gets that. Um, and like I said, with Coach Herman, one of the things he did tell me, and again, you can read the story tomorrow on TexasChalkTalk.com, that his offensive scheme, the slot T, is designed for multiple backs to be 1,000-yard rushers. Um, and it just didn't happen with the other backs yeah. this year. Uh, at the same time, though, there's no question. I'm happy for Jamie. The way that he runs and his refusal to go down on first contact, his refusal, because because I've always told my nephew, you are a running back. Your first, you have two jobs. The first one is to make the first guy miss. Whether you are a blocker or carrying the ball, you got to make the first defender miss. Sidestep him, stiff arm him, block him. Get him out of the way, and your second job is to go get positive yards. Your third job is not to turn the ball over. Mm -hmm. We don't yeah. like that. We we don't like turnovers. We don't like fumbles. Don't fumble the ball. Okay. We're going to close this segment out. In the third segment, we're going to sort of set the playoff picture, talk a little bit more about the district, and then we'll see where that takes us. I'm Jennifer Fierro, your broad podcaster here in the Highland Lakes with Daniel Clifton, who covers Canyon Lake football for us. Stay with us, please. We'll see you in the next segment. <laughs>